It has been a year since 15-year-old Shan Yin Lam was found dead in Hong Kong. However, conspiracy theories refuse to die down with the police and protesters now presenting and coming up with very different accounts of the teenagers' deaths. Let's first tell you about the case which has exposed the mistrust between Hong Kong's youth and the authorities. 15-year-old Chan was caught in a crossfire between the police and protesters in August of 2019. The teenager then released a video asking why she was being targeted. Chan further said that she was just out shopping. However, things took a different turn when Chan's naked body was found in the sea two days after she went missing in September 2019. The police ruled it to be a case of suicide. However, protesters said that the 15-year-old was raped and murdered by the cops for participating in the anti-government demonstrations. What followed was a delay in investigation and most notably, Chan's college, where she was last seen before going missing, refused to release the full CCTV footage. It did do so after massive outrage by protesters and students. The video then showed the teenager roaming around the campus. And at some moments, she looked visibly disturbed. The 15-year-old has had a history of mental illness. Chan, who comes from a broken family, has been in and around, in and out of correctional homes. And her caretaker said that Chan had attempted suicide in the past as well. Now, Chan's mother also corroborated the social worker's claims. However, the findings failed to put an end to conspiracy theories, especially after a court ruled that the cause of death remained uncertain. The girl's mother has said that protesters have been harassing her. She said that she has been accused of siding with the authorities and lying about her daughter's mental health condition. Now, for more on this story, Richard Kimber is joining us live from Hong Kong. Richard, a very good afternoon to you. Now, tell us a little bit more about this case, the haunting death of Chan Yin Lam, which has sparked plenty of media coverage and conspiracy theories as well. So what do we know about this case so far and what kind of cover-up is being suggested at the hands of authorities? Well, it's now a year since this all took place and the coroner's inquest that tried to investigate in more detail exactly what may have happened ultimately concluded uh, without reaching a clear verdict. The jury uh, involved in that said that they could not ascertain clearly whether or not there was a suicide involved or um, an unlawful killing and they did not want also to say that they conclusively felt that there'd been an accident. There simply was not enough evidence in this case. And what this represents really is the growing distrust between the public and the police and the public and the government with regards to so many of these cases that are somehow related to the protest movement in the last 18 months. In this case, very many conspiracy theories circulated very quickly because of a lack of information being made public by the authorities and by the university uh, where Chan was studying. And that basically helped to fuel this idea that something uh, might be being covered up. And that's very representative of what's been happening in Hong Kong in recent weeks, even now, where, for example, the mass public testing for the coronavirus here has been undermined by fears that many people in the public have had that actually data could be gathered by right. the Hong Kong government and passed to the Chinese government through this public testing. So this is how we're seeing that same sense of public distrust manifest itself even now. Right. Now, a year later, has there been any development in her case or have there been any further calls for reinvestigating the matter? And do we know if any further investigation will be done? Also, tell us a little bit about how this has exposed some deep issues in Hong Kong's authorities and how they operate. Well, at the moment, there's no suggestion that this case may be reopened or further investigated, but that has not stopped the uh, continued sense of frustration that many protesters feel towards this case and the fact that they don't feel it was properly handled in the first place by the police and by the government. Um, now the coroner has basically ruled uh, that it cannot reach um, a, a clear verdict on the case. There's not much more that can be done from uh, the investigative side as far as many people are concerned unless of course more uh, evidence is presented and that could include uh, more CCTV footage that so far has not been made available becoming available. That's something that some of the protest groups who still maintain that there's a conspiracy going on. They're caught, still calling for that, but no real suggestion of any further investigation. The bigger issue, as I say, is how this is exposing more uh, frustrations and distrust between the public and the government, not just in the case of the public testing for the coronavirus, but also in relation to other protest-related investigations, where, for example, there have been incidents tied up in protests that are only now coming to court and only now being investigated some six, nine, or even 12 months after they took place. And it's becoming very difficult now 
to really understand what may have happened nine months ago during the heat of what was often some very violent clashes between protesters and police. Right. All right, Richard, thank you so much for all your inputs on this story and thank you for joining us this afternoon.